So like I always do, tonight will be commentary on the Dem debate. And oh, what a freaking debate it was, my word. Hi, Sam. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. Um, hey, Rob. I don't know. I just... Uh, hi, Valerie. Hey, Monica. It was kind of bananas because the whole time I was watching the debate, I was thinking, wait, you guys have done two, you know, two nights for the prior three debates. So why can't you just have five and five? I mean... It was excruciating, Jeffrey. And, and numerous times I was like, oh my God. Yes, Rob, absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. I'm telling you. I'm just, you know, I, I tried something new this time. Usually what I do is I take notes and Unfortunately, with that, I end up missing a lot. So what I tried this time is I just start, like, I was just tweeting every, like, quoting um, and my reactions and stuff in in real time. So I'm just kind of going to go through, um, you know, some of the, some of my tweets just because I think that's easier than making you guys wait and, uh Wait, what? Okay, I don't, can you guys see this? You probably can't see this. What the fuck? I, okay, Megan McCain. Megan McCain. Just tweeted, Tulsi is missed up there tonight. Dem debate. And no, it's not a mock account like it's Megan McCain. What in the fuck? Oh my God, I'm so confused. Okay, so anyway, so I'm just going to read through some of my posts because, whoo. Um, well, you know what, Monica, you know, they're the the spin room i can't watch i just can't because it just oof but Shh. rob do you mean me i never ever 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 said warren was for medicare for all ever 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 um so Tonight's debate was just a, a clusterfuck, um, you know, as usual. Um, but, you know, it's weird because, like, Julian Castro kind of has his moments. Um, he he had a few shots at Biden that I was like, ooh, yeah. Um, he's not the worst. I'm not going to vote for him, but he's not the worst. Oh, okay, Rob, because I was going to be like, do what? <laughs> You're getting me confused with someone. I was about to be like, come on, Rob. <laughs> um, so one of the, you know, one of the things that was just, you know, Yang came out and, and he's talking about it. his His person comes out and he's like, oh, my God, just wait. We're going to do something at the debate that's never been done before in history. So, you know, we're all making jokes and we're like, all right. So, you know, some of my suggestions were, is he going to come out in a bolo tie? Is he going to break dance? Um, Yang made a joke that he's going to be wear big gold chains, um, you know, things like that. And he came out and essentially offered a sweepstakes. Um, in the opening statements, he said, um, 
that I'm going to do something that's never been done on a debate stage before. And what he said was, we're going to pick 10 people to give a freedom dividend, which is $1,000 a month, to every month for a year. So essentially, $120,000 divided by 10 people of donations that like people donated to the campaign that now he's like raffling off for votes. It was so bizarre and it, I mean, it, it had crickets. Everyone was just like, wait, what? So that was the never been done big moment hi, you can, you know, get the freedom dividend, which everyone's supposedly going to get if they vote for me anyway. So it was so stupid. So stupid. He is, he's a walking meme. That's all Yang is. He's literally a walking meme. Um, so that was his big reveal. And it was, sad. I didn't, it's, you know, think it would be kind of, you know, profound. You know, Lance, I really have to wonder about the legality as well. I, I really don't know about this. Um, it was, it was funny because, um, Pete Buttigieg, who is just, you know, a complete Republican tool, um, was, going to um, speak next. And he goes, <laughs> well, um, that was something. Um, and it was, just, it was awkward. It was absolutely awkward. Nobody knew what the hell was going on. He wanted it to be this huge reveal where everyone cheered and it was like, oh shit. Freedom dividend, 10 people. Oh my God. Well, the thing is, there's millions of us. So 10 people. I mean, what he, I get what he's trying to do. He's trying to capitalize, pun intended, on people, on people saying their lives have been changed with that thousand dollars. And people will fall for it. People love gimmicks. They love it. So I mean, I'm sure his his fans think it's the greatest thing in the universe. Um, so he also had moments when I was at, like, I was shocked. I sat there with my mouth hanging open. I could not believe it. Um, some of Yang's gems were, I'm Asian. I know a lot of doctors, so I can talk about healthcare. That was a good one. That one's blowing up on Twitter right now. Um, he also said um, he called Puerto Rico a country. Um, people attacked Trump for that, but okay. Um, okay, so Yang literally was talking about immigrants and said, you know, you can tell them, welcome to America. The water is great what are you kidding me people are freaking dying and becoming you know disabled and diseased in flint and other places around the country and welcome to america the water is great that was so tasteless and uninformed it's oh my god he was a mess he was an absolute mess klobuchar was boring as hell and just pathetic, but we kind of expect that. I don't even know how the hell she made it on the damn stage, but Yang, I mean, I would never would have voted for him. I never liked the dude, but he was, I mean, this was like even bombing more than I even thought he would. I mean, it was bad, absolutely bad.
I, oh my God, <laughs> even one of my, one of my Bernie friends on Twitter, she's Asian and she's like, we finally get one, a brother of our own up on that stage. And then he's, <laughs> I mean, it's so bad. He doesn't like, he doesn't care. Yang is, you know, I've never heard about, I've never heard someone rail against the awful power of money so much and then offer money as a solution so much. Like he talks about money and all of the evils of it, but then at the same time, he's like, but take this money, it'll get better. He's, oh my God. So anyway, so Biden had a really bad night. His teeth fell out. <laughs> Not to be an asshole, but they did. Um, and she, or Biden also, he, this is going to sound ableist because I'm trying, I feel bad for the dude. I wish I didn't, but I actually do because I, he's just in really bad shape. But Biden, like, for some reason, the camera showed behind him right when the show started. And, and it showed him taking out a blue, like, washcloth out of his pocket and, like, putting it in his hand like this and, and just, like, keeping it at the podium. And I'm thinking he thinks his eye's going to bleed again. Like, he literally thinks his eye's going to bleed again. Um, no, I don't mean, like, they fell, like, out. I mean, they, like, fell down. Like, they fell, like, out of the gums. They fell, like, down. They stayed in his mouth, but they fell. <laughs> I used the wrong word. They, they never left his mouth, but they fell down. <laughs> There's a, if you guys are on Facebook and follow, um, the DNC parody site, they did a video clip of it just with that. Um, so anyway, so yeah, that, that wasn't good between his, you know, his washcloth <laughs> and losing his teeth. Um, that didn't start off well, but he had a, okay. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm going to hell. <laughs> you guys are killing me. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so. One of the highlights of the night was Biden called Bernie the president from Vermont. <laughs> I mean, where's the lie? It was pretty awesome. So, yeah, that was pretty great. And then he didn't necessarily correct himself, which was just freaking awesome. Um <laughs> You guys are killing me. Um, okay, so um, <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to get through the show, you guys. Um, so um, <laughs> it, exactly. So Biden had a really rough night. He was doing the, um, you know, the the completely disoriented, um, you know, mixing up words. He forgot Warren's name and Bernie's name. 
he's like the senator sen senator to my right and the the senator senator to my left he it's things like like he honestly he forgets people's names he forgot obama's name who he talks about every five seconds of every day um then castro the first time castro called him out it was it was hard i mean it was hard joe was said something about health care and um and he said you would have to opt in um to get his plan and castro said it's my plan wouldn't be like joe's plan where you have to opt in and joe's like i didn't say you had to opt in and castro's like you literally just said that two minutes ago. Did you just forget what you said? And the audience was like, ooh. <laughs> like, it was hardcore. It was absolutely hardcore. Um, he... Um, Kamala also completely weak as fuck. I mean, just weak as fuck. And I go into these debates. I mean, it's obvious. You guys know who I support. You guys know who I want to vote for. I don't hide that. I don't, you know, try to mistake that for anything. But what I do do is I go in there and I weigh people's, like, debate performances and tune out everything I know about them um, from the past and just go just by that and by that castro has come out ahead several times like i said i'm not gonna vote for the dude and i don't agree with you know a lot of the shit he's done but solely looking at the debates he had some strong performances in the first and the third but in any case kamala was a mess and it has nothing to do with me not liking her it was awful she numerous times she made statements that she cracked up about and nobody else laughed she seemed drunk a number of times um and i'm not just saying like she everybody on twitter was saying is she drunk is she drunk it was really weird at one point, you know, um, they asked Joe Biden, having been VP, when Kamala, Kamala says she's going to do something, um, you know, on first day by executive order, um, you know, Biden said as VP, I can tell you that's not feasible. Um, and Kamala just goes, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> i'm serious my husband's like what the fuck um but she I'm, did and she she literally leaned forward and was like <laughs> and then like she goes how about this joe how about this how about we say yes we can <laughs> And nobody laughed. Awkward. <laughs> so awkward. It was bad. It was really freaking bad. <laughs> well, wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> oh my god. It <laughs> so yeah, she was she was um it was sad because it's like you almost feel embarrassed for her because she thought she had a really good joke and nobody cared. Um, she's trying to get back that momentum from the first debate where she bitched out Joe and it's just not going to her second. Um, and it's not going to happen. It's just not. They've already chosen Warren. They're they're done with Kamala. Kamala. Um, she had some other jacked up moments too, but that's the one that really stands out. Klobuchar is just, oh my God. So Klobuchar 
you know, she's like, I worked with Bernie on this one bill and blah, blah, blah. And um, Bernie's just like, the whole time he's trying not to do the Bernie side eye. Um, but she said, I know he wrote the damn bill, but I read the damn bill. And I'm like, who the hell writes a bill without reading it? Like, what are you trying to say? I read the damn bill. Okay, awesome. Cool. You're supposed to. When a bill is presented to you, you should read it. That's kind of your job and your obligation. And like, you know, girls, I could hear girls like, ah! you know, and clapping. And I was just like, oh my God, seriously. She has all these things that she, these like things she tries to make one liners and they just, they always fail and come across so awkward. Um, Beto actually had a few almost endearing moments. Um, Oddly enough, uh, because he's so close to the, you know, the gun tragedy or the, the shooting tragedy, which just happened in Texas. So everybody was talking about like what, you know, he's been active in, in you know, helping people with that and, and things like that. So he actually did have a few moments of humility and, um, you know, he didn't bother me too much tonight. I felt like it would have been bad if he went the whole night without speaking Spanish, but rest assured he did. Um, uh, that's amazing. Kate. Uh, yeah. Warren Okay, so I talk about all the candidates, even when Bernie pisses me off, I talk about him. But one of the reasons I go extra hard on Warren is because she has so much jacked up shit in her past, in her present, in her platform. And people call her progressive. So yeah, that's why I'm going to come on, come down on her hardest. That's why. So... She is all about corporate money, as she calls it. Um, what do you call it? Like um, uh, dark money. She calls it dark money. She says she's cool with taking it. And then she continuously calls her campaign grassroots. Fuck that nonsense. You know, she came out with her own Medicare for all plan today which is not so what what difference is it from kamala they both came out with shit that is not medicare for all and they're calling it medicare for all if you complain about kamala complain about warren it's that simple they're they're using warren's pseudo quasi Medicare for all she came out with today, by the way, she's been running nine months and only now has Medicare for all on her freaking website. Healthcare is the number one issue to people. It's healthcare and climate change. And she had nothing on healthcare on her website for nine months. How is that acceptable? So she finally put something out and it's absolute garbage. There's still deductible. There's still co-pays. There's still, you know, she she's talking about um, $500 a month limit on prescription drug prices. $500 a month limit? So people who pay $100 a month and can't afford it, that affects them how? That's how privileged she is. She thinks that's actually a good thing. I mean... It, she's just a mess. And quite honestly, one of the things that bothers me about Warren is 
her voice is so shaky and nervous and she has no confidence or conviction when she speaks it it makes me it gives me anxiety i don't like it it freaks me out like i'll be fine just paying attention watching the debate and then she's like i grew up in and my granddaddy and and her that wavering wavering voice you know just comes out and it just like ah oh, there's like this nervousness in it and why would we want to vote for someone who's constantly seems so unsure yeah bay's voice was bad he had yeah he was getting like um laryngitis or something because he's been doing like three rallies and town halls in in 24 hours like he's been going across the the country like non-stop and he's just he's beat and it was apparent and you know of course you get the why is bernie yelling so crazy Biden was actually the one yelling tonight, which was hilarious. <clears throat> okay, so I'm not the only one who finds Warren's voice like... Yeah, you know, Daryl, and, and you're absolutely right. Some people who, you know, who watch the debates, you know, only see these candidates on the debates. That's a really valid point. Absolutely. And for that, I'm kind of bummed because, no, it wasn't Bernie's best performance. He had a few good points, like he really nailed, you know. Um, you know, he finally brought up the fact that he's the only person that, didn't vote for the Trump's war budget all three times. Um, he needs to flaunt that shit more. Like, you know, people like Warren are talking about military budgets. You just voted two out of three times to not only vote for Trump's military budget of $717 billion, but to give him the extra amount that he didn't even ask for. So no, you don't get to talk about, you know, the um, MIC spending. You don't get to, you voted for it. But unfortunately she knows a lot of people don't know that and don't research it. So she's just gonna say it anyway and yes, queen. So, um, Yeah, he does. He he only gets like five uh, five hours of sleep a night on good nights. He said um, there was a point when Bernie was not, you know, Bernie was not asked a single question for over half an hour. During that time, he also was not called on to respond to anyone else's. So there was a time when he literally did not say a single word for over half an hour. There's no other candidate on that stage that happened to. Even Yang, Klobuchar, like the, you know, the lower polling people, it, they talked more than Bernie. Why? Well, I think that... Um, one of the things is um, he, um, ABC is owned by Disney. He bullied Disney into giving their people higher wages and better benefits. And now they give him no time on the debate stage. So I think that's definitely something relative. Um, 
Let me see what my other uh, comments were. Yeah, I met Brother Cornell. He's beautiful. He's so wonderful. Actually, Brother Cornell says, um, uh, Warren is a progressive Monday through Friday, and Bernie is 24-7, 365. And I'm like, there you go. Um, let me see. Um... Let me see. Now my mind is going blank now that I have you guys here and I'm cracking up from your comments. Um, oh, okay. So this is something I, I tweeted about um, Joe Biden. Um, I said, at this point, it's abusive and neglectful for Joe Biden's family to encourage him to keep running. As much as I loathe him, I find myself feeling bad for him. At the same time, he's putting us at risk by pretending all of his faculties. He has all of his faculties. We cannot risk this in the White House. And I'm 100% serious. It's why, if you love someone, why wouldn't you tell them to drop the hell out? He's, I mean, he's not well i'm not a doctor i'm not going to diagnose him but he's something's wrong um um <laughs> yeah okay this was another good yang one um so um andrew yang also said he lost all his friends when his company tanked he lives in silicon valley that's funny as hell. Funny as hell. Um, what else? Oh, so they asked these two young African American women. Um, they were walking out during the break. Um, and they asked them <clears throat> what, um, Who's standing out to you tonight? And of course they expected them to say Kamala or Warren, obviously. And the one girl's like, I really like Bernie Sanders. I like what he has to say. And then they go like this to the other girl and she goes, I have to agree. I really like Senator Sanders. And they were like, okay, back to you. <laughs> it's on my Twitter. It was great. Um, Matt Taibbi said, drink, Yang fulfills his big promise, became the first person to buy 10 votes on live TV. Um, oh, so there were, there were lots of protesters, lots. Um, okay, cool. Someone got back to me. Um, uh, what happened was towards the end, Joe Biden started talking and huge eruption of protesters broke out just screaming stuff and nobody could make out what they were saying. But it was right when Joe Biden was asked about some about deportation. So we figured it was something like that. Um, it's been confirmed it was DACA recipients. Um, they were screaming, we're DACA recipients and our lives are at risk. Um, uh, let me see. Okay. Yeah. So it was DACA. Um, what happened was the, the, um, the, the moderators did have some good questions, surprisingly. Um, so they asked Biden, straight up, do you think it was wrong to deport over 3 
million immigrants when you and Obama were in the White House. And he, Biden got very defensive and, you know, he tried to deflect um, and they called him out and said, you're not answering the question. And it was at that moment uh, that the, you know, then the, the DACA protesters um, and Joe just kept going and looking down. So I, it was, I knew it was something about him because he felt he looked guilty as hell. And someone said Bernie smirked. Bernie's a huge, huge supporter of DACA, always has been. Um, I got to rewind. I got to watch it again. I'm not sure if that's true, but um, if so, it's pretty hilarious. Um, you know, Monica, I had that thought as well. Uh, Monica said she thought Joe might walk off stage when the protesters... I mean, this went on for a while. Like, it felt like a while. Um, there must have been a lot of them because um, the one moderator really gave it to Kamala. It was freaking awesome. I don't have the quote. It was a really long, it was like a question that was also a long statement within it. Um but she called out Kamala on her prior grievances of being DA. Um, and there was an ooh, <laughs> like <laughs> all over the audience when she asked it. And Kamala was like, <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Um, the one moderator, um, send Miss Klobuchar, I'll go to you. And um, she goes, she's like, uh, <laughs> she said, um, you, you know, you voted on, oh, I forget what it was now. And she quoted her and Klobuchar goes, that's not my record. I was like, yeah, it is. It took me like two seconds to verify it. People forget we have the internets. Um, oh yeah, here's a here's a um, a real gem. So, Cory Booker said, "Dag Nabbit." And the best part is. It was in a question when he was talking about living in a black and brown neighborhood, low income, and trying to, you know, um, it's, basically it's how we know that T-bone was a lie the whole time. Um, what else? Um, oh, Biden at one point spoke, they were each given a minute and 15 seconds. But at one point towards the end, they let Joe talk for like three minutes straight. I couldn't understand what he was trying to say. It was like the epitome of word salad, but I don't even, I don't know. I have no idea what he was trying to say. And like, it was just quiet and I started feeling so bad for him because I don't even think he knew what he was trying to say. He was talking about like record players and, and all kinds of shit. I don't even know what he was talking about. And so they let him go on way past his time. And then they called on Castro and, um, Castro laughed and said, well, that's quite a lot. <laughs> um, so, of course, they asked Bernie about Venezuela. Um, and they, um, he essentially, um, the moderator alluded to the fact that um, the dictatorship and, um, you know, uh, basically the chaos um, going on in Venezuela is socialism, which is the same thing that Bernie 
supports. That's what the moderator insinuated. So Bernie's response was to equate what goes on in Venezuela with what I believe is extremely unfair. I agree with what goes on in Canada and Scandinavia, guaranteeing healthcare to all people as a human right. And then he went on. Um, so yeah, the, it, it was like a, a gotcha, you know, oh, we're talking about the instability of Venezuela. That's like what you support. Um, what else? Oh, Yang admitted he was pro charter schools. That's exciting. Um, he said when they asked him about being, you know, supporting charter schools and he goes, I'm pro good schools. Not sure what that means, but okay. Um, Kamala, which was interesting, she actually acknowledged and brought up the fact that she's only been senator for two years. That's all the experience she has. That's it. Um, yeah, as I said, Yang called Puerto Rico a country. That was kind of weird. Um, Biden called Bernie president, which was awesome. Um, Biden said we didn't lock people in cages, so it was a different kind of um, deportation. Not accurate. There's photos. Um, let me see. Biden did, you know, he, he did the heartstrings tonight. Um, he talked about his son dying of cancer when they were talking about um, health care. And uh, my girl, Amy Valella, I had her on. Um, she lost her daughter because her daughter had a pain in her leg, turned out to be a blood clot. She died. She was, I want to say, 21 or 22. Um and, you know, she just posted on Twitter in response to Biden, you know, you losing your child to sickness when you're rich and you have the money to pay for something is not the same. Like, my daughter would still be alive if she had the money. That's the difference. So, yes, absolutely. Losing someone to cancer is painful. I've been there. I get that. But to say that you understand what it's like to have no insurance and, you know, thousands of dollars in medical bills because of having cancer, you, you still, there's that disconnect. He doesn't get it. And then he, you know, so he was absolutely trying to gain the sympathy vote. And that's not enough. Even as an empath, it's not enough. I'm not going to go there. Um, Rahm Emanuel, biggest, oh my God, what a twat. Anyway, so he's given props to Biden all over the place. He's like, oh, look at the way he's such a stand-up guy. Oh my God, so bad. Um Harris, several times, Kamala was asked questions and Kamala said, you know, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to talk about Trump. And she would do that. She would go to Trump. And it's the easiest way to deflect. I'm not going to answer that because I'm just going to talk about the monster. And everybody's obviously going to agree with what I say about him because he's evil. So that was really weird and awkward that she just kept saying, I'm going to talk about Trump. She talked about Trump more than everyone on there combined. 
Um, then let me see here. Oh, this was really freaking weird. Bernie was talking about um, how we're the only, you know, major country in the world who doesn't have, you know, um, guaranteed health care and, you know, free college tuition and stuff. And Biden just goes, this is America. <laughs> like, that was it. He just yells that and just stops. The moderators had no clue what to do. <laughs> it was just quiet. Um, oh, my God. Here's a good one. Here's a good quote uh, <laughs> from Yang. <laughs> he said... Um, <laughs> he said, it's like a peanut farm with no floor. Where do you grow the peanuts if there's no ground? <laughs> I don't know what, where these people are coming from tonight. Um, here's a really good one for Yang on immigration. He said, this country has been a magnet for human capital for generations, human capital. Um, Rom said Biden brought energy to the debate. Um, Dude, even Peter Dow has freaking Bernie's bag. He's like, are you criticizing Bernie for yelling? Anyone not angry enough to raise their voice isn't paying attention to the hell around us. Castro nailed it in this one. He said, um, my problem with Biden is he claims good things about Obama and says he was VP, but then when he says bad things about Obama, he's like, oh, well, I, I trust Obama made that decision, and so he only claims him when it benefits him. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think the, the, there's a lot of Yang quotes blowing up right now, but I think the I'm Asian, so I know a lot of doctors is just not going over well. Um, let me see. Oh, here's here's what here's one of um, Kamala's wish list items to get a rousing applause, which just failed miserably. Um, when they, uh, Kamala was asked, does, um, does, um, is the, the shooter in Texas, is Trump partly responsible for the shooter in Texas because it was an attack on, um, you know, Mexicano and, and Hispanic people. Does Trump bear some responsibility? And Kamala said, um, Trump may not be pulling the trigger, but he's tweeting the ammunition. And just like waited. And there was nothing. Just crickets. Um, Castro called out Mayo Pete, and I can't think of what he said now. Damn it. Oh, that's what it was. Freaking, you know, P 
Pete was doing his, you know, I'm in khakis. I'm, you know, this young, rich white boy and, you know, I'm affluent and went to an Ivy League school and I'm going to stand up and say, this is why people don't like politics. This, my plan is better than your plan. And, <laughs> and Julian's like, this is a debate. <laughs> like, he tried to do the high and mighty and be like, all this bickering, like, okay, dad, it's the primaries. This is called a debate. Like, my plan is better than your plan. You're not supposed to say that. Oh, my God. Absolutely crazy. Um. Oh, and then, you know, Beto, I think it was Beto. No, it was, I think it was Corey. I think it was Corey because he said it numerous times where he's like, um, he, he says, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. Um, let me see what else. I think that's pretty much all the, oh, um, Beto literally used the word incrementalism while speaking about healthcare. Um, Okay, so Biden, I don't even understand this. I think he thought it was going to be a zinger. He said, um, uh, um, Biden said, for a socialist, you have a lot more faith in things than I do. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You know, Nicholas, I'm not sure. That's a really good question. I'm not sure. Well, mm, I'm not sure. That's a good question. I mean, I know he's in Texas. He's not too far from Beto. Um, but I... Mm -hmm. I know he stated numerous times that he is in a, a very immigrant populated area. Um, socialists are are faithless and, and baby eaters. That is true. Absolutely. Um, oh my God. Kamala said, I forgot about this part. She said when they were talking about Obamacare, she goes, the late great, John McCain. <laughs> the, the moderator said, is, is Bernie pushing too, too hard? And Biden's like, that's for the voters to decide. <laughs> I mean, I almost kind of have to like him sometimes just because he's so clueless. Uh, Buttigieg went at Bernie. Like, I mean, he went at Bernie. Like, mm -mm. That was not okay. <laughs> um... Yeah, so Biden inadvertently kind of admitted he didn't read Bernie's Medicare for All bill, which was interesting. Um, as I said, Warren just came out with her 
pseudo quasi Medicare for all. Um, uh, plan today and it says absolutely nothing about getting rid of insurance companies. It talks about holding them more accountable. Um, and tonight she was asked, Warren was asked again, do you support getting rid of private insurance companies? And she deflected again. She refused to answer the question. She always does. Um, can you narrate how you say saw Warren in relation to Bernie tonight? Um, Edward, how do you mean that Warren backed up Bernie? I'm not quite sure what you mean. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Mayo Pete and, and Warren have both started courting super delegates. Um, what else did I write down? I think that's all I wrote. There was one other thing that I did write in my notebook because I was, I just found it so awesome. Um, when they were talking about healthcare, um, Warren was standing right here and Biden goes, <laughs> he's like, I know Senator here's with Bernie. And he was like, I was like, yeah, she better be with Bernie. She's not, but that's funny as hell. Um, Susan, did you see her bill she proposed today that she calls Medicare for all? That's not in any sense of the word. Whether she says she supports Medicare for all is so completely irrelevant. Um, because Edward, did you see Warren's bill either? I mean, she doesn't support Medicare for all. She wants to keep private insurance plans in the mix. And she, I mean, first of all, it's, we're nine months in. She's never even had Medicare for all on her website. Today she comes out, puts it on, and the bill is literally nothing like Medicare for all. Nothing. She calls it that incorrectly and deceitfully, but yeah, you guys definitely, definitely, definitely got to check it out because, um, well, see, here's the problem. Her plan does not eliminate co-pays. It does not eliminate deductibles. This is, um, you know, she's she's a, a public position, private position. She's very Hillary-ish. Um, I'm going to actually, um, there's a, a doctor I follow on Twitter. She's actually, um, she's freaking amazing. She became a, a surrogate for Bernie's campaign when they saw her making Medicare for all videos and things like that. Um, and I want to read exactly what she stated um, with the plan. And I, I mean, I work in healthcare, so I, you know, I just, I look at it and I read through it and I'm just like, oh my God, this is not Medicare for all. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, here. Okay. Her plan she came out with today. Um,
It does not eliminate premiums. It does not eliminate co-pays. It does not eliminate deductibles. It does not eliminate private insurance. That's not Medicare for all. So she's, you know, she is exactly like Kamala, Kamala in the sense that she is stating the same thing as far as, yes, we're, we're promoting Medicare for all. They are adopting that. They are copying, you know, that, the name of that, even though it's not. Dude, I wish I didn't have to go to work in the morning because I was about to start taking shots every five seconds for like just all the crazy shit that was going on. Um, she, Liz is absolutely Obama 2.0, like absolutely. See, this is the thing, Christine. I said the same thing. I said, you know, Bernie, I love you. I put it on Twitter, Bernie, I love you. But this, this you know, this fake ass Medicare for all bill she put out today, like you need to come out against it. This is wrong. You came out about Kamala's when it came out and you stated, this is not Medicare for all. I understand you're friends with her, but you need to come out. You need to, you need to show the differences. And yes, they're going to call you a sexist, but they already do. So, but then people started commenting like it's too early. They need to focus on Biden, blah, blah, blah. I guess I can see that. I mean, that's obviously where Bernie's head's at. But like, I kind of just want to shake him and be like, will you just explain? I mean, sometimes his tweets, I swear they're geared towards her. But he's just not saying her name. Like today, like... I'd say maybe an hour after she released her plan for that healthcare, he tweeted that um, he tweeted, uh, "You can't be, you know, you can't support Medicare for all if you're still supporting private insurance companies or something like that." And it was almost like it was right at her. Um, so. I don't know if we ruled the world, you guys. I just don't know. You guys are hilarious. You're awesome. Um, no, I have never had Jordan Chariton on my show. I've met him several times. Um, hey, Nicholas, if you if you want to reach out to Jordan and tell him to do a show with me, go for it. <laughs> I'd welcome it. You guys see, this is what happens. People say you should do a show with so-and-so. And then I say, okay, ask him. <laughs> you could be my pimp. I think it's funny though, because some of our posts really do sound comparable sometimes. Um, But yeah, I mean, Nicholas, I don't know if you even, if you talk to him or follow him or whatever, but if you want it to happen, tweet at him and then I'll have my followers uh, retweet. <laughs> it's all like, <laughs> I'm amazed at how responsive people can be on Twitter though. It's pretty amazing. Let me see. Nicholas, you're so cute. Oh my God, that's funny. I know, you know, and that's a damn shame, James. Um, nobody covers Flint like Jordan. And it's like so many people are just forgotten about. Especially by Andrew Yang, who says we have the best water.
All right, Nicholas, bring it on. Yeah, Jenna, that'd be rad. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Well, you guys, it is almost 1 a.m. here, and I have to wake up at 6 for work. See what you guys do to me? Now, I'm not going to be able to sleep because you guys are cracking me up so hard with your jokes. I'm going to... The funniest thing about this show is I will not go back and watch any of them. I refuse to. People are like, oh, do you go back and watch? No. No. I don't want to see my facial expressions. I don't want to hear my bad jokes. Like, no. <laughs> not going <laughs> to... Not going to happen. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. And um, thank you guys. You guys are freaking awesome. You guys are the best. I seriously, I'm always bragging about how the viewers we have at RP are like, I, I just, I feel so fortunate to have you guys. You are just so amazing. I well, yeah, like I literally couldn't do this without you guys, but <laughs> still like you guys keep me going. You really do. I mean, you guys, just, you know, you hang out with me, but it's more than that to me. You guys humor me, you listen to me, you, you know, this is like therapeutic to me. I just rant and to have people actually have interest in, you know, what's on my mind is pretty amazing. So you guys kick ass. So thank you guys so much for watching and much love.